from the book of Nehemiah. I want to read to you just a few verses of scripture from the book of Nehemiah. And I'm going to read to you from the 8th chapter. I believe we're going to begin reading at the 5th verse, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse number 5. And we'll hop around a little bit here. We're going to read verses 5 and 6 and 8 through 10. The word of the Lord says this, And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen. With lifting up their heads, and they bowed their heads. And worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Verse 8. So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly. And gave the sins and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is the Tirshatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I depend on the Lord tonight, but I trust that he'll help me to preach to you a few moments on this subject. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. Could we lift up our voices unto him and ask his blessing upon the preaching of his word. Lord, thank you for your word and thank you for your people. Thank you for this precious fellowship we have with you. We pray that your anointing would rest upon the delivery of your word. Let it be With clarity, let it be with wisdom. Let it be with compassion. Let it be accurate, Lord. I pray that it will be spoken in love and yet in boldness. And for this we give you praise and we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen Amen. and amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. This man, Nehemiah emerges in the middle of our Bibles to bring to us such a beautiful accounting of how an individual can feel the burden of God in their heart and can act upon it and respond to it in such an appropriate way. And the burden that was upon Nehemiah's heart came when he was given detailed information concerning the fact that Jerusalem lie in ruins, that the old wall lie in ruins, and that the the people were devastated. And I thought about that today as I'd already felt led of the Lord to minister to you on this wise, but I thought about that today as Brother Sean preached about the importance of repairing the breach and, and, and repairing the old waste places. And it was confirming the word I had felt from the Lord. But Nehemiah was one of those repairers of the breach. He was one of those restorers of the paths. And the thing that God called him to restore specifically was the wall that would surround the city of God. And he was of a downcast countenance. Uh, Famously in the scriptures, he came into the king's presence with a downcast countenance. The king said to him, Uh, Why are you of a downcast countenance? Which I think is interesting to note that that was an unusual thing. May it be an unusual thing with us. Uh, I hope the unusual thing is not that we have a smile on our face. Amen. But let it be unusual that we don't have a smile on our face. When Nehemiah walked in with with, uh, a downcast countenance, the The king said, something's wrong because this is unlike the Nehemiah I know. And when he inquired a bit about it, it was like 
a gushing stream came out of Nehemiah. As he said, what is there to smile about? What is there to be happy about? For the old city lie in ruin, the wall lie in ruins. The people are intimidated. The people are, are seemingly without any kind of a future. They've lost their past. They've lost the, the land of their heritage. And as he began to, to, to express his burden, the Lord not only had, a, had put a burden upon his heart, but the Lord began to impart that burden unto the king. And the king took part in Nehemiah's desire to go back to Jerusalem and build the wall. And so Nehemiah went back or went to Jerusalem and he built the wall. And I'll even say it this way. He didn't, he didn't actually necessarily build the wall. He rebuilt the wall. And rebuilding something sometimes is even harder than building it. Sometimes if something has been brought down, it, there's, a, there's a sense of loss so strong that, that it takes quite a bit to muster up the energy and the courage to rebuild it. But I believe God wants to rebuild some things in us tonight. I believe there's some people who feel like they've lost some things and God wants you to know that he's going to rebuild it in you. And he wants to give you the strength for that. Hallelujah. And he wants you to know that the joy of the Lord is your strength. So Nehemiah, of course, goes to Jerusalem and quite a, an undertaking if you ever get the chance to, to really study that book out. He went by night so people wouldn't really pay a lot of attention to what he was doing. And he was, he was checking out the city. He was sizing it up. He was making his plans. He was drawing out his prince, if you please, and, and he was just making sure he had everything in order before he launched into the project itself. It was going to be quite a challenging prospect, and it was not uh, without its detractors. Infamously, Sanballat and Tobias rose up against him and against every work that he did. They challenged him on every front. They challenged him to say, this is, a, this is just a, a useless effort. They challenged the legitimacy of what he was even trying to do. Why are you trying to do it? They questioned his motives. They tried to infer that there was some sort of a, of a malicious agenda on Nehemiah's part. That he was actually going to be some kind of a nefarious character that the king should be concerned about. Tried to defame him. Then they tried to, to talk about the competency. Saying that you don't know what you're doing. You're not even a good engineer. Your builders aren't good at what they do. We began to, to, to mock what they were doing. They said if a fox were to climb up on that wall, it would be enough to, to cause the wall to fall. And so there was mockery. There was defamation. And it actually grew unto the point that they tried to stop him by legal means. They tried to stop them with physical violence. And Nehemiah let them know I'm not playing games. I'm building this wall. And he told the people of God, put a weapon in one hand and a tool in the other, but we're not coming down from this wall. And they built the wall. They built the wall. And, and it was an amazing part of Israel's history. And when they got to the completion of the wall, then another part of their uh, project began because they weren't just simply there to rebuild the wall. They were there to bring revival. And Ezra the scribe and Nehemiah the Tirshatha, he had been the cupbearer for the king, which was quite an unenviable task. It was his job to taste the food or the drink of the king before the king did. And if he didn't drop dead, then the king would enjoy his lunch. And so that's, that's what Nehemiah was. But now he's the Tirshatha. He's the governor. Ezra is the scribe. And the Levites are all in order. And so you have the governor, you have the, the, the priestly scribe, and you have the Levites. And they are standing before the people. And, and as they're, they're, they're explaining to them why the wall and what this matters and why this matters and what, what, what it all infers, the Bible says that they began to read in the book of the law of God distinctly. And they began to cause the people to understand the meaning of the law. And they read it in such a way and explained it in such a way that even the children could understand what the law of God was saying. 
And they were doing so because it had been so long since the law of God had been read in the ears of the people. And it was to be read in the ears of the people on a regular basis. But, but it had been so long, nobody was even familiar with the law of God. But in revival, the word of God begins to take preeminence. And when they read that word of God, the people began to see the perfection of the law, the expectation of the law, the high and holy standard of the law. And they began to look at their own inefficiencies, inadequacies, and deficiencies. And when they saw the contrast between themselves and their imperfection and the law and its perfection, it caused a great mourning to overtake those people. And they grieved as they heard the law of God. And, and weeping and wailing and mourning began to be incurred among the people. And as Nehemiah and Ezra and the Levitical priests began to hear this ground swell of weeping and mourning, they spoke up and spoke to it and said, Weep not, mourn not, this day is holy unto the Lord. And they said, they said Go and have a meal. And enjoy your family. And get some neighbors and, and, and have some fellowship. Because this day is holy unto the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. And I have come tonight in the name of the Lord to tell somebody that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Sad one, weep no more. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The Lord is going to give you joy. He's going to take from you the spirit of heaviness and he's going to give you the garment of praise. He's going to take from you mourning and he's going to give you the oil of gladness. Hallelujah. Where there was mourning, he's going to give you dancing. He's going to put a song in your soul. He's going to put a praise upon your lips. He's going to put dancing in your feet. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. I'm preaching to people today who need strength. That's what you need. You need strength. You need strength for the journey. You need strength to come through the trial you're facing right now. Some of you have burdens upon your shoulder, and you don't know how you're going to make it through, but in the name of the Lord, God is going to give you strength. I'm not talking about a caffeine rush. I'm not talking about a, a cheap high or a temporary thrill. I'm talking about the strength that can only come from God when you don't have the energy to keep going, but you somehow find the energy to keep going. When you don't have the strength to me keep moving, but a holy wind from heaven comes upon you and you have strength that you draw from. Hallelujah, that you don't even know how it got to you, but it's going to get to you because it's the joy of the Lord and it is your strength. Praise God. I need to know what the joy of the Lord is. I don't want to just guess at what it is. I don't just want to, I don't want to equate it with some kind of a human happiness. I don't want to equate it with some kind of an emotional state of well-being. I want to understand what is joy. Because the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, hallelujah, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Joy is a fruit of God's Holy Spirit. It's something that comes from the Holy Ghost. And I need it. I need it in my life. I need it to get into my words. I need it to get into my handshake. I need to get it, I need it to get into the way I treat people. I need it to get into my mind so that when I'm sitting by myself, I can still have joy. I need it to be in my spirit and my soul so that when the dark clouds begin to gather overhead, I can have a joy down deep in my soul. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, he'll give you joy you never knew. Hallelujah. He'll give you joy in the midst of your sorrow. And he'll give you peace in the midst of your storm. Oh, bless his name. What is the joy of the Lord? The scripture tells us what is the joy of the Lord. It helps us to understand when you begin to look at what the Bible says about joy, a very interesting picture begins to develop. And there's, there are common threads that, that, that take you through the journey of joy in the scriptures. And you begin to see what 
it is really all about. For instance, Jesus explains that there were three servants that were talented servants. One had five talents, one had two talents, one had one talent. And they were given these talents by their master. And the master uh, went for a journey. He came back and he expected there to be a multiplication of the talents. And if you're familiar with the parable, you know that the five talented servant invested his talents and he brought back the, the, the investment and he had gained five more talents from the master. And then the two talented servant had wisely invested his talents and he too had gained two more talents. And this one talented servant invested his talent in the earth, buried it, and said, I don't have anything to show you except that one talent's buried in the earth. He said, I knew that you were a, an austere man and you, you uh, 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 reaped where you strawed not. And, and so he said, I just... I just, I didn't really know what to do with that one talent, so here it is. And in this parable, the Lord begins to give us a, an insight as to what happened with those three servants. He said to that one talented servant, he said, you're wicked and you're slothful. And, and that servant was cast into outer darkness as an unprofitable servant. But the two servants that did, in fact, trust in the thing that the Lord had given them, the Bible says he looked at them and said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. I want you to know that he was welcoming them into the joy of thy Lord. It was a place of eternal abode. He was welcoming them into the eternal kingdom of God. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Jesus talked about joy in the parables that he shared. In one particular parable, he described the good shepherd who went looking for that one lost lamb. There were 90 and 9 sheep in the wilderness, but that good shepherd went looking for that one lost lamb. And when he found it, he, he wrapped it around his shoulders and he brought it back to the fold. And he reunited that one lost lamb to the 90 and 9 in the wilderness. And when that reunion occurred, he stopped the parable. He said this shepherd called his neighbors and began to rejoice with them. And he stopped the parable and said, so is there joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. He didn't stop there. He said the kingdom of heaven is like a woman who had ten coins and she lost one. Now some people might not even consider that one. I got nine. What do I need that one for? But in the kingdom of heaven, every coin matters just like every lamb matters, just like every soul matters. And that woman began to throw her house into a disarray as she looked for that one lost coin. And when she found it, she had overthrown the furniture. She undid the carpet. She looked behind every nook and cranny. And when she found that one lost coin, she called together her neighbors. They all joined together. And she rejoiced with her neighbors over finding that one lost coin. Jesus stops the parable again and said, So, in like manner, is there joy in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repents? There's something about one lost coin being reunited to the nine. There's something about that one lost lamb being reunited to the ninety and nine. That brings joy in heaven. That brings joy in the presence of the angels. Something happened when that five talented and two talented servant were, were giving account for their talents. And they were being deemed well done by the master. And he opened up the curtain of time. And when they looked into eternity, they stepped into the joy of the Lord. And I've come to tell you it's that joy of the Lord that is your strength. When that prodigal son walked away from his father he said I don't want anything to do with you. I just want your money. I want your, the inheritance. I don't, want, I don't want to wait for it. I want it now. I want to live it up now. I want pleasure now. Be careful with that pleasure that lasts for a season. That sinful pleasure. It's not real pleasure at all. But in his presence there 
is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. That's the difference between real pleasure and fake pleasure. Fake pleasure lasts but for a season, but real pleasure lasts forevermore. And it's in his presence, and in his presence there is fullness of joy. That prodigal son that we call him, that prodigal, went away from the presence of the father. He lived riotously. He lived like a heathen. He lost everything that he had. He lived it up, and he he lost it all in his drunken state of mind until finally he was in the pigsty, infamously in the pigsty. And and while he's there eating like no human should eat, and, and he would fain have filled his belly with what the pigs were eating. And while he was sitting in this pigsty, the Bible says he came to himself. He came to himself. And while he sat there in that low and degraded state, he considered that my father's servants have it better than I have it right now. Maybe, just maybe, I could get up out of this place and I could go back to my father and he might welcome me in as a servant. You know what that tells me? That tells me he didn't know his father at all. And if he had known his father, he probably would have never left in the first place. I am of the persuasion that people who really do truly come to know the goodness and the power of Almighty God, they never want to leave it. Those who really truly encounter him as he is, they don't want, there's nothing in this world that can satisfy. If you have tasted of this heavenly gift and you've walked away from it, I want you to know there's room at the cross for you. There's some place right here in the Father's house, in his presence, there's fullness of joy. He got up out of that out of that place of degradation he came back to his father's house and when he was when he was a long ways off his father apparently was watching for him because he ran to him and he fell upon him and he kissed him and he welcomed him home And when his son said, can I be just one of your hired servants? His father said, that's not who you are. You're not one of my hired servants. You are my son. Somebody go kill the fatted calf. The elder brother had a little problem with it. But the father looked at the elder brother and said, you have ever been with me. But this my son was dead and he's now alive there's joy there's joy to be had something about the reunion of his children and the reunion of the lost sheep of the house of Israel and the reunion of the coin to the other coins something about that eternal abode it's the joy of the Lord it's the joy of the Lord now Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God by faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by faith. Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet was moved with fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him by faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death by faith. Abraham went looking for a city that hath foundations. Whose builder and maker is God through faith. Sarah also herself received strength to conceive seed. And bring forth a son. These all died in faith faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off were persuaded of them hallelujah and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims upon the earth they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country and truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out they might have had opportunity to have returned but now they desire a better country that is in heavenly wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God for God hath prepared for them a city by faith Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt hallelujah he endured by faith as seeing him who is invisible 
Finally, the writer of Hebrews said, time fails me to tell you about everybody. I wish I could tell you about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah. I wish I could tell you about all these heroes of faith because they, through faith, subdued kingdoms. And through faith, they turned to flight the armies of the aliens. And through faith, they quenched the violence of fire. And through faith, they stopped the mouths of lions. And their, their own lives, their children were sawn asunder. And they, 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 they gave their own lives and jeoparded their lives. And finally, he said, the world was not even worthy of them. And then he says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us. Hallelujah. There's a great cloud of witnesses of people who have been there, who have done that. Are you going through a fiery furnace? Because there's some guys in the great cloud of witnesses that can say you can make it through the fiery furnace. Have you, are you going through a lion's den? Because there's somebody in the great cloud of witnesses who can say, I've been through the lion's den. God will meet you in the lion's den. I, I, everything is going to be all right. Some way, somehow, everything is going to be all right. So let us lay aside every weight. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith who despised the cross and endured the shame for the joy for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame why did he endure the cross? For the joy that was set before him. Why did, he, why did he endure the cross while he despised the shame? I want you to know he despised that shame. I know it's a pretty little, it's a pretty little way that we, we convey it 2,000 years later. And we've got our sweet little songs. And we hum them. And we sing them. And we strum them. And we key them to say on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. And sometimes it can get so quaint. And it can get so serene. And it does bring tears to our eyes. I'm thankful that we're moved by the message of Calvary. But sometimes it can be on a hill so far away that we don't understand the brutality of that moment you hear me he despised that shame but he endured that cross and there's a reason he endured that cross it was for the joy it was for the joy it was for the joy it's because sheep were coming home it's because coins were being reunited it's because prodigals were going to return you want to know why because there's power in the blood because there's power in his name because he was fulfilling one covenant and ushering in another. It was for the joy. It was for the joy. That's why he was wounded. Not for his transgressions, for our transgressions. That's why he was bruised. Not for his iniquities, but for our iniquities. He did it for the joy. The joy of bringing all God's children home. After Job had spent chapters defending his own righteousness, his accusers leveling accusations against him, and finally... The Lord appeared in a whirlwind to Job. And he said, who is this that darkeneth counsel without knowledge? Who is this? He said, gird yourself like a man. Instruct the Almighty. And he began to go back systematically through every part of the discussions that Job and his accusers had. And he began to deal with each of their questions and all of their expoundings. The things that they expounded so, so, so wisely upon. And they, they, they basically were trying to outdo one another with who knew more about God. And, and so God said, here I am, guys. Instruct me since you're so smart. And he said, Job, I have a question for you. Hath the reign of Father... Who hath 
begotten the dew? Where does the ice come from? Do you know why there are galaxies? Why there are constellations? You talked about Orion and the Pleiades. Please, I, I, I beg you, tell me about those constellations. Explain to me what their purpose is. Tell me about the coney who are but a feeble folk. Tell me about the wild donkey that doth bray. Tell me about Leviathan and about Behemoth. Since you know so much, why don't you tell me about all these things you understand? I have a question for you, Joe. Where were you when the morning stars sang together? And where were you, Job, when the sons of God shouted for joy? Because, Job, there was a time when sons of God shouted for joy. There was a time when all God's children were together. There was a time when there was peace and there was harmony. Ladies and gentlemen, if God has to manifest himself in the flesh, if God has to be in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, if God of glory has to come down into the form of man in the fullness of time made of a woman made under the law, if God himself has to be, has to be a part of this world that we're living in, so that he can deliver us from the sin and the death we can't get out of. We are stuck in the death grip of sin. We are stuck with the vice grip of sin and death. But God said, so help me. I will come down there myself. And I will live the life you have to live to get free. And I will live the kind of life you have to live to overcome hell. Ha. I will live the kind of life you have to live to overcome death, hell, and the grave. I will do it because I'm going to see joy. I'm going to see joy, my sons of God. To as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. You want me to tell you what the joy of the Lord is? Here it is. I'm just going to tell you what the joy of the Lord is. It's when all God's children come home. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Look, angels, I got another one who's come home. It's time to have joy in heaven, joy in the presence of the angels. I'm going to endure this cross, and I'm going to despise the shame for the joy, for the joy, for the joy, for the joy set before me in his presence. There is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Here's how that joy is your strength. Because every time the enemy comes against you, you understand this world is not my home. This world is not my home. I am just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. There's a reason I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I've got joy. I said I've got joy because I know what happens when I shed this body in dishonor. It'll be raised in honor. I know what happens. I said I know what happens on the other side of this life. I step into the glory of the living God. Woo, hallelujah. Death has lost its power over me. Death has lost its power over me. You hear me? Death has lost its power over me. I've repented of my sins. I've been buried in the name of Jesus. I've been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. There is resurrection power living on the inside of me. And that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if that spirit live in you and dwell in you, he shall quicken your mortal body. Can I preach it like I feel it? Behold, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, 
in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and this mortal shall take on immortality and this corruptible shall take on incorruption then shall be brought to pass that saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God who hath given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another. Comfort one another. I've got joy for you, brother. I've got joy for you, sister. Comfort one another with these words. Ah. I'm going to a city. I said, I'm going to a city. I'm going to a real city. I'm going to a city with a resurrected body. You hear me? I have a body that can't get sick. I'm going to have a body that can't get old. I'm going to have a body. You hear what I'm telling you? That'll never die. I will live forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. That gives me joy down deep in my soul. Brother Joel, how do you have joy when you're going through something like what you're going through? Because I'm going to a city. I'm going to a city. Yeah, but the enemy's coming in like a flood. Let him come in like a flood. I'm going to a city. I'm going to a city. Yeah, but you got problems and you got turmoil. I'm going to a city. Hallelujah. I've got Jesus on my side. I'm going to work until the day is done. You hear me? I said, I'm going to work until the day is done. If I've got breath in my body, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. I'm going to give him every last breath I have to praise his name. I've got joy in my soul. got joy in my soul. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth my every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free. Yes, free indeed. It is joy. It is joy, it is joy, it is joy. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. I want somebody to reach past the clouds of what you're going through right now and lift your hands to the Lord and thank him. Thank him for a place prepared for you that where he is, you may be also. I want you to know these saints, bishop of these last 100 years, they're in that great cloud of witnesses. 
those that have gone on before. They might be gone for a little while, but they're only gone from us in this physical plane. But they're in the presence of the living God. In the great cloud of witnesses. You hear me, ladies and gentlemen. There's coming a day. I said there's coming a day. On that great getting up morning when all the saints shall rise. When that roll is called up yonder, I'm going to be there. You hear me? I'm going to be there. There is a happy land of promise over in the great beyond where the saints of God shall soon the glory share. This is my joy. This is my joy. This is my joy. <laughs> Come on. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Who I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Some of you are stuck in earthly thinking. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Love not this world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We're going to a city. I said, we've got a destination. This is my joy. This is my joy. Woo. You can stand with me right now. They said to John the Baptist, this guy that you bear witness of, he's baptizing. There are people who are coming to him and they're following him. This man that you baptized, people are following him. He, John the Baptist said, don't you remember I said I'm not the Christ? I bear witness of him. He said, don't you remember that he's the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world? He said, no man can have anything except God give it to him. And he said, God has given him the bride because he is the bridegroom. He said, but here I am, the friend of the bridegroom. I see the joy of the bridegroom and his bride. That forerunner, that greatest prophet born among women, John the Baptist. He said, I look at Jesus and I look at his followers and he said, this is my joy. Seeing the great reunion, the great reconciliation. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Some of you are searching for joy in this world and you'll never find it. You're trying to drink your way to it. You'll never get there. You're trying to smoke your way to it. You'll never get there. You're trying to love somebody your way through to it, and you'll never get there. You're trying to you're trying to event one go to one event after another, and you'll never get there. You've got to understand this joy is a joy that comes from heaven. It's the joy of the Lord, and you got to get in that bride and be reunited, be united with the bridegroom. Hallelujah! You've got to be that lamb that gets up on his shoulders and says take me to the fold. You've got to be that coin that gets brought back to the other nine. You've got to be that prodigal son that comes to himself and says I'm going to my father's house. Come on, that's it. Just lift up your hands to heaven right now and let the joy of the Lord come upon you. Let the joy of the Lord come upon you right now. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Let that joy of God come on you right now. Let that joy of the Lord get on you right now. In the name of Jesus, I want somebody to let that joy get in your hands. Somebody let that joy get in your feet. I need somebody that's going through something. I'm very specifically. I need somebody that's going through something right now. I need you to step out of your seat and into that aisle and say, I've got joy down deep in my soul. I've got joy down deep in my soul. Come on, that's it. I need somebody that's going through a challenge right now. You come out of that seat with joy on your lips. Come on, that's it. Great is the Lord. Greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king.
Joy, joy, joy unspeakable, joy unspeakable, joy unspeakable. We're shaking off the heavy bands of depression right now. We're shaking off the heavy bands of fear right now. Come on, somebody. Fear has no hold on you. I said fear has no hold on you. Anxiety has no hold upon you. Hallelujah. Fear of death is coming off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your hands and receive that in the name of the Lord. Fear of death is coming off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Death has no hold on you. You are free in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of Jesus. Fear of disease. Fear of disease is coming off of you right now in the name of Jesus. He Come on, that's it. That's it. By his stripes you are healed. Come on, that's it. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. In his presence there is fullness of joy. Come on in to the presence of God. Come on in to the presence of God. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Wave your hands for joy. Leap for joy. Dance for joy. Sing for joy. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you people. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Come on, that's it. Leap for joy. Leap for joy. Leap for joy. Dance for joy. Sing for joy. Make a joyful noise. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, some of you are waiting for the singers to sing. Don't wait for the singers to sing. You've got the song inside of you. Give him praise right now. Give him praise right now. I need somebody to begin to praise the Lord. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Magnify his name. Come before his presence with singing. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Make a joyful noise. As we, as, we, as we begin to sing, I want us to start. It's going to come like a wave. It's going to come like a mighty rushing wind from side to side. There's going to be a holy wind from heaven. And joy is going to be spread across the people of God. I want you to lift your hands right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift your voice right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's going to come like a wind and a wave. It's going to come like a wind and a wave. Hallelujah. Huh? Yeah, that's it. Let it come all the way. Let it come all the way across. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's it. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Let joy 